a motorcycle came on scene. Uh, the motorcycle went on the sidewalk and I think picked one of them up. And then uh, officers tried to detain the motorcycle um, for a traffic stop. They fled. Um, and then one of them got into... So roll it back real vehicle. quick. Yeah. So when the police arrived um, at the clothing store, no one was in the vehicle? They were just in the vicinity nope. of it? They were just in the vicinity of it. And I tried try to argue that um, in the cells that, you know, I, I, there I, it was Matt Rhodes and basically kind of everything that he said was like assumptions. They, you know, kind of they matched the description. It was, a you know, two males and a female um, when we finally That's a very loose. them. Very oh, yeah. loose. It was very loose. Um, part of his, what he says is PC, is that at the cash exchange, um, the woman, I, I don't remember if it was a knife or if it was a wrench, but one of the suspects had a wrench, another one had a knife, and the third one, they couldn't identify, like never pulled out a weapon. And the people that they apprehended, one of them had a knife, one had a wrench, and the other one, I guess, didn't have any weapons. So they considered that PC or evidence that they were the same people. Um, the fact that they had duffel bags that matched this, the duffel bags at the cash exchange. Granted, one of the duffel bags did have the money in it, but I was like, how can you prove it was from this cash exchange? So are you saying that essentially... Rhodes tried to they tarry the Ohio RS. first uh, to to then proceed to search for uh, whether or not that person uh, was armed, found the weapons, and then linked that, that as PC. Like they, they had um, so th how the how everybody ultimately got arrested is that the motorcycle took off um, when they tried to stop it for a traffic stop. Um, then uh you know a chase and i think if that motorcycle had never actually fled yeah that's that's a big fuck up there right even if you wouldn't have had anything even uh, if you're illegally yeah. detained you, you need to stress to people and i had to do this yeah. all the time even if you believe that you're illegally detained let it happen because then you can argue if you're afraid of the poisonous tree and everything gets dropped as soon as yeah, you they, then they run didn't have they didn't have probable cause to search them at that point but yes. once they run you're right yes. then it, like all bets are off so th they ultimately all of them got apprehended because a chase happened at the clothing store and then um they were like well these must be the people from the cash exchange because they have duffel bags and one of them has a wrench and one of them's a woman even though they they don't look the same and but they were by the car from the cash exchange so it must be them yeah that's not enough um that, that's what i'm saying like uh so here's kind of my what i why i'm asking about the accomplice versus accessory charges um when i okay this is my bad uh this was this was a note for me uh, when I went into the cells and like one, uh, somebody came up and they were like started asking about s charges when they were going over the situation and they were like what is it like robbery kidnapping reckless evading and I kind of blurt and I blurted out it's robbery financial institution it's an umbrella charge um which I shouldn't have said that was my bad um but so the the guy on the motorcycle that pulled up after the fact that wasn't with the three he ended up getting accessory to robbery kidnapping and i think he got reckless evading um but they gave the other people that were apprehended they gave them i'd actually have to check because there was a third one i didn't look at his charges but they gave at least two of them robbery of, of a financial so if they gave the third one robbery of financial is it technically my question is is he an accessory to what because nobody else got those charges yeah 
They should have done accessory to um, the, the robbery of a financial institution. Not those specific charges that they decide to break down and list out. But yes, they did fuck up with that. So do you think that that could actually be like argued that there's no primary for those charges? Um, You're yeah, arguing again, semantics to... on it. And the, the judge will see that. The question is what judge you get um, will determine whether or not you'll get away with wiping all of those charges or if the judge will just change it over to robbery or financial. So I think with the accessory guy, I can go two routes. Um, I I have to like look a little bit more at the evidence, see if they documented the radio station. Um, yeah. But which I don't remember that they did. And I don't think anybody mentioned it in any of their statements. The report was definitely not done when it was FOIA'd, but, you know, it's L to them. Um, but I think I have two options for uh, the accessory guy. That we fight the charges for the primaries, and if they get dropped down, then... There, there's no merit to his his charges because they didn't get you know the robbery of financial yep. so he shouldn't either yes or i just fight it separately and just say well there's technically no no primary for these charges do what you said all. first because essentially if the judge does decide to bundle it up and go with robbery of a financial institution and then you get the other charges dropped then you kind of up shit creek because then you can't appeal and appeal yeah yeah so what so, you always do is you'll go for the primaries first and accessories get that handled and then swing in with the other one so you can put both cases to the docket and then state inside of it that you'd like a continuance until that first trial's heard so then that way you're still within your statute of limitations right okay so just gonna have this stuff up on my phone i'm just gonna look at it really quick they didn't it doesn't appear that they noted the i don't see the radio station um noted at all in their the evidence um I'll read the Hello. reports again, but okay. So my other question is, um, Matt Rhodes, um, I think he was kind of the, the primary officer on this. He was the one that he said he found them at the clothing store. He didn't put in a statement. Um, is it just safe to assume that he will give like a verbal statement at the appeal? Yeah. Any officer that's going to be primary will have to do an actual statement in court anyway. Because they need to explain their reasoning. If they don't show up, then it's just an instant win. However, you yeah. need to request them as a witness too. Yeah, I'll, re I'll request him as a witness. He's listed as the... He's listed as officer involved, so I'll request him as a witness. Um, I swear, and I wish I hadn't cut him off, because I, I accidentally cut him off, but I swear to God, because I was pressing him about like how does how can he know for certain or how can he prove that these were the people from the cash exchange? And he started to say, Well, I can't prove. And then I accidentally cut him off, but I swear he was gonna say, Well, I can't prove it. And I wish I hadn't have cut him off. <laughs> Alright, he'll he'll have to fumble that way in court because everything you told me, if that's how it went down. I ain't getting those charges. There's, there's definitely, you know, factors to consider. Like one of them did have a duffel bag with money. They were next to the car that was, you know, with the cash exchange. Um, but that's for the most part it. I mean, they, they, they lost visual of them for and i don't know if, i don't think the officer specifically stated how long they lost visual on them the suspect stated it was like about five minutes um but 
you know, it's, it's just like, I, I don't think that they can prove, like, I think there's just doubt, you know, I don't think yeah, that they can say a lot of 100% doubt. certainty that it was them. And, you know, I just think that's kind of bad police work. Yep. In my personal opinion. Lazy police work. And uh, by the sounds of it, you've got an easy win on your hands. Should be a good, yeah. uh, good actual trial for you to push for. But just remember what I yeah. said, always work with primary accessory first, uh, sorry, accomplice first, and then just do a con ask for a continuance for the accessory till after the um, hearing has been heard for the uh, primary and, and um, accomplice. Okay. Because um, that way, once it's I up will... there on the docket, then the statute doesn't matter. You're good. Yeah, yeah. Um, We got on this pretty quick quickly so it probably won't go to the docket until either tomorrow or the next day because uriel is preparing for the soze trial tomorrow so i imagine he's very busy with that yeah but did you did you hear about any of that it's kind of no. interesting um it's supposed so my sister, to be beyond a reasonable was doubt telling me about it that basically um it's not shadow the it doesn't have to be 100 it's it specifically states los santos it doesn't state san andreas and so he's arguing <laughs> sounds that, like someone fucked up there yeah it it does every contract um, i wrote i would specifically write san andreas so it encompassed the the whole of the state not just the city yeah so if, if someone decided to write that up and, and really fuck themselves by saying los santos because they're uh uneducated in the, what our state actually is and that's on them they fucked up yeah so I don't know all the details, but he, uh, Tilly was saying that there might be a war or something, and that basically he's arguing that everything outside of Los Santos proper is a lawless area, and like laws do not apply. And I don't know. I mean, if the Constitution specifically does not state San Andreas, he's kind of right. Yeah. He's 100% right. He is 100% right. Because, like I said, whoever decided to write it and was not smart enough to understand that they, it's not the state of Los Santos, it's the state of San Andreas. Los Santos is the city limits. They fucked up. Yeah, I mean... There's no I... implied Los Santos equals San Andreas. That's why we have Blaine when, County. Um, when the... Uh... You know, the sheriff's department opened up. I looked at the legislation regarding, like, the, the mayor's oversight for the PD. And kind of the same thing. It specifically says LSPD. It never says, like, the UPD or police department. It only states that he has oversight over the LSPD. And I mentioned it to somebody. I was like... I don't think he actually has oversight over the sheriff's department. And I said it to my sister when I was talking to her and she was like, you're right. He doesn't. Oh. So honestly, that kind of tracks with the, uh, the constitution, frankly. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's actually fucking wild. If they, <laughs> if they fucked that up that bad. Yeah. That is a hundred percent right. Anything that, that would be considered Blaine, Blaine County, there is nothing in the Constitution that allows anything. That's too funny. I'd love to know what idiot wrote that then. If I'm... <laughs> if I was smart enough to always write San Andreas and made sure that I stipulated that every fucking time and told everyone else that was doing contracts to do that, whoever wrote Los Santos... Maybe shouldn't be writing that shit. Huh. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's tough. That's tough. I guess we'll see what happens. Please uh, tell me that wasn't Crane. Please tell me that wasn't Crane that fucked know, that up. Funny. So, but thank you. I'm, I'll work on that. I'll uh, write up the stuff for Mason. And then when we post both of them on the docket, I'll just immediately ask for a continuance on Mason's until the primaries or appeals or um, go through. Who wrote the Constitution? You know? I don't know. I guess we'd have to look at, go down to the courthouse and look at the legislation. We'll have to have a look at that. Because uh, I, I need to, I need to laugh at whoever did that. That's, um, yeah. A big fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll check that out later. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully I get my bar license soon. Um, I've been talking to like, you know, a couple people. About, Gotta talk like, to Benji about that. Like, bringing up kind of issues that they've been having with the PD. Um, one person told me that they were in a vehicle. Uh, it was a stolen car. And um, somebody like crashed into them and they ejected out of the vehicle and were injured and cops pulled up and um, realized it was a stolen car and uh, searched him and searched the car and was asking him questions and like pressing him about the stolen car. And they also, I guess, found a gun on his person um, and was like pressing him about all this stuff. And he literally had to say, like, can we please wait until I get medical? Um, which is crazy that they even were, like, doing any of that while he was injured. I could understand documenting the stolen car. And then once he's on his feet, you know, asking him what happened. I mean, happened, they could detain and him seeing, and put cuffs on yeah, him and that seeing, kind of shit. Seeing if he would confess to being in the car, but... I asked him, I was like, how did they, how they know that you were even in that car? And he was like, that's exactly my point. They didn't. They just assumed. Yeah, I mean, yes, yes and no. If they want to go down the whole route of um, uh, seeing whether or not he is covered in glass from flying through the windshield and all that kind of stuff, then you get into weird arguments kind of deal. Um, uh, I would usually err on the side of avoiding those kind of conversations as much as yes how did they know that how do you know that he wasn't just hit by the car and that kind of shit and the driver fled um just be careful when you do those kind of conversations in court because it does go to court because you can uh, some people will make it weird real quick yeah no that's fair um it does sound a little bit like a fucking rip bozo yeah unfortunately yes it does happen as as much as you could argue the finer points of it yeah you'll find I... in the future it'll be you have to work your way through some of those cases and some you'll just have to be like unfortunate yeah i see what you're saying i think like my bigger issue with it is that they were asking him questions while he was still injured yeah uh, which anything he says do, yeah anything he says um, can't use it's not admissible yeah. and they, they can't even mirandize him until he's on his feet you yep. know um so that that's a little odd but um he said that at one point uh you know he he got a, he got a little frustrated with things and um i guess one of the officers was like Oh, well, you changed up real quick. And she was sort of like, we were going to go easy on you, but because of your attitude, we're going to give you all the charges. And I was like, that's malicious prosecution right there. Yep. Um, and you can't, you can't just give people like, I mean, they could give him all the charges because he committed crimes. If they can prove it, that's fine. But you can't give somebody charges specifically for the reason of, I don't like your attitude like that's, that's it was that something works. i tried to um 
tried to argue a, a very very long time ago um yeah, so it, it's forced coercion right uh, now technically but technically in, in um in, in other states of, of the u.s right you cannot be lenient towards someone in the like by avoiding giving charges to someone for them to plead guilty not guilty all that kind of shit right but it also means that you can't go harder on people because of how they are towards you and start tacking on extra charges just because you're unhappy with how they're talking to you and then if you yeah, want them and... to play nice and you tell them play nice or i'm going to give you more charges that falls directly under forced coercion well i guess what happened after all that is they're in the cells uh this guy's gotten a lawyer and the officers tell the lawyer if he just apologizes we'll drop some of the charges yeah that's that that directly falls under forced coercion so you just need to find a way that you can weasel that in if you want to try and push for that um unfortunately we don't have forced coercion uh, in part of any constitution that we have um yet. yet i would love to have it there because boy it definitely should be there with how some of the officers act so it could be something that you you might not win however if you argue uh, well enough it could be something that gets put in that's that's the real fucking win you can get forced coercion and, to be put in and that's why i was i was talking to this guy back about, baby thank you for the 13 months that, you know because he's had a he's had multiple sort of situations happen and i told him look I wouldn't go into this with the idea that it's it's win or lose, it's black or white, right? Each time somebody makes this kind of, um, you know, they, they make a complaint against an officer, they take it to court, they go through this process, it's, it's definitely like an oh shit moment for the officer. Mm. Um, and that's important because it holds them accountable. And the more that this happens and the more times that officers are held accountable, whether that's financially or just in court through their time or, you know, just like uh, having to kind of deal with any kind of consequence to their actions, it's going to make for better police officers. Yes. And that's what we need. Yes. That's your goal. Right? It is. It is. So, like, although it may not s always seem like a win, um, it ultimately, I think, will be beneficial in the long run. So I, I just I just kind of trying to set his expectations, you know, and he I think he understood that. And I think he appreciated that approach. Yeah, just be upfront with your people like I always used to say whether or not I think something's winnable. Uh, but even uh, apart from that if i think that this is going to be for the better of uh, everyone in the city to push for this i'm going to push for it so they usually appreciate that more than you saying oh this is a hundred percent win and then it falls down in court because then you have no real credibility to yourself just be honest and upfront with people and if they still want you to push for it even if you stand there and say you are going to lose this case and they say well i still want to appeal it then sure you, you you do your thing but yeah just do what you did and just always be upfront with people yeah yeah i think it's important to manage people's expectations you know but with but... that also make sure you have your own expectations you know anytime i used to go into the cells and it, and it was someone new that i didn't know and they requested me i'd straight up tell them you lie to me i walk you'll find people will try and make up some kind of bullshit story you do not have any duty to report what they tell you right when you become a lawyer right? You have no duty at all yeah now when when doing that um you need them to tell you the truth so you can argue it so nothing little comes up and you look like the dickhead because you don't have you're lacking critical information so just make sure you take that strong approach with people and just let them know do not lie to me don't tell the story it's my job to tell the story not yours yeah. don't avoid people one, telling bullshit to me one thing that 
thing that I'm like still kind of unclear about um, is that officers said that the motorcycle that pulled up in front of the the clothing store was was seen during the pursuit or like there was a bike swap or something it was kind of unclear whether they meant like during the cash exchange i that's what i what i thought they meant or like after the clothing store pursuit um but i kept asking because they said that the way that the swap happened is that like the vehicle stopped the person hopped over a ledge the the bike was on grass or something and i said how did you how do you know that was the bike like how did you id the yeah, bike did you get a plate no plate well sorry and they they couldn't really tell me like yes or no whether or not they got the plate they said that somebody called it out or like they called out the ro of the vehicle so they just assumed that somebody got a plate um it, it was kind of unclear so i need to talk to um the clients about that because they they said that the motorcycle wasn't used during the pursuit sure. during the cash exchange is there any plate that's on the um report for it there is like but that was um that was uh because it was processed after the clothing store portion okay. like the the bike was pursued after the clothing store it crashed out and i assume impounded so essentially they're going to go off officer said that this on radio that's gospel that won't hold yeah i think i think during questioning i'm going to need to ask about um uh, i'll call back um i think i'll need to ask about that portion like how the bike was involved and like have them walk me through it because if they're gonna say like oh yeah it was over a ledge and it was like down on grass and I'm, I'm gonna kind of press them like how did you get the plate if that was the only time the bike was seen like yeah. what what's going on there yeah so just um just to uh, keep an eye on that make sure that uh you don't give the pd any leeway too by talking about it beforehand mm. um because then they might set something up what i used to do and I, I used to love doing it right was um a lot of lawyers don't show police their cards at all right what i would do is i would um uh, show uh, this was back when we also had a da and i'd talk to them about certain cases i'd show them some cards so they thought they knew the way that i was going to argue for things and then i'd just do a complete 180 and do something different so essentially they would set up their whole argument based on what i what they thought i was actually going after and then i fucked mm -hmm. everything for them so when you're talking to the cops feel free to, to let loose a couple of your cards but don't show them exactly what you're doing because you want them to focus on that small thing so they're going to sit there and go okay yeah, she's going to be arguing about this. We need to make sure this is locked down, which then they hyper-focus that, forget everything else. Easy for you. Good way to fuck okay. with them. I'll, um, I'll think about that. I'll think about, like... Yeah, I'll give that some thought. So, say, for example, that case, right? Um, what I would do is I'd be more harping on the fact of that, okay, so you said it was two males and a female and start talking about just them and the description right you don't give a fuck about that there's a million uh, people in the city could have been anyone right but they're going to think that you're yeah. going to be pushing about that and their appearance and everything like that and then focus on that you know one thing that was stated in the report by one of the officers is that um so at the clothing store you know one person hopped on the bike they fled and then one of them got into the blue car that was using the cash exchange which was dumb um but in the officer's statement he said that that person was identified as being the primary driver of the original cash exchange pursuit although he was in completely different clothing how did they know he was the primary driver that sounds something perfect to argue in court for it how, how did you identify that person what were they wearing do you have pictures of what they were wearing 
which there are no pictures of uh, the suspects at the cash exchange in the report. So then you might also have to deal with officers lying, stating that that's exactly what they were wearing the whole time and that they didn't change. And then you need to go down the route of uh, showing whether or not they did. Now, uh, something interesting that you could have done is um, that you could have gotten a picture of their bank statement stating when they changed of that transaction that they did to get changed if they got changed and paid for clothes there. Because then that would completely debunk anything that the officer said if they paid for clothes just then and there. You wouldn't need to go uh, further into what they were wearing. So... No, we need to talk to Benji about the weird stuff first. I should ask for bank... Because they didn't even get changed at that specific clothing store. They got changed at a different one. And they just happened to go to that clothing store for some Which would reason. still be after the, the cash exchange happened, right? Could that, though, um, by state showing that they changed clothes, though, could the officers then argue that, you know, I mean, again, this this is all, like, assumptions on their part, but could they somehow uh, argue, well, then it must be them because they changed clothes, you know, no, at well, this I mean, exact that, time. What are you talking about? They said that they were at a beach party before that and they wanted to get clothes on. So they went and bought new outfits and got clothes on. That's your point as a lawyer? To twist the truth. You are the story creator. You need to have an answer for everything that comes up, right? Is You're 100% right. Yes, they will go down that avenue of that. But, I don't think that's actually, I don't think that's going to work because while we were in the cells, um, they did interrogate them. And one of them like came up with a story about how they were meeting for coffee and that how we walked over to the clothing. So it was a whole, it was a bad story. Um, I think that that unfortunately that story then wouldn't allow for that. Hmm. That's where it's your point as a lawyer to make those stories before they do. So um, you'll get used to it. Essentially, you assess the whole situation. You look at it from what the prosecution would do, which you should be able to do quite well because you're in those shoes. And you look at what they would say. And sometimes it's better to say, hey, you know what? We're not actually going to answer any questions. We're going to take this to an appeal. Do what you have to do. And then that gives you time to formulate something. Or if you want to come up with something on the spot, you need to talk to them and make sure you have the finer details for them sorted out. Yes, we should be doing that when with lawyers per se. However, uh, it's yeah, I was our job. Ask like, you know, basically saying to them, "Tell me, tell me your story right now before we go in there." Yes. What are you gonna say? Yes, you need to know that. Yeah, I do. Need because to, you know, I do need to know the, that. Most they're, times they're, they're going to say, say dumb it. things like. Uh, and he did. He did say a dumb thing. Yeah. And then he kind of he kind of fucked over the other person because he made up this whole elaborate story that she wouldn't know so then i i just told her i was like go ahead and you know i, I advise you to pretty, you pretty much any questioning yeah and that's the thing right is that people will make these stupid stories up because they think that they're doing the right thing and then they cross check with the other person the other person's story is completely fucking different they're fucked they're fucking themselves yeah. right there that's why you're the storyteller not them because then that way you can go around and say to everyone this is the story this is what you're sticking to do not answer questions outside of that period yeah you need to yeah. keep the uh, hold the reins don't let someone run off and do what they want because if they do that all they're doing is fucking you over yeah no you're right you're right like i, I used to tell some wild stories like I didn't get told that um, uh, one time when they uh, uh, blooded out someone from the Vargos that um, uh, Benji decided to spit on the body as they were leaving and then they got brought up in questioning of uh, why was your spit on the dead person's body then I had to come up with a story then and there on the spot whilst in the interrogation 
<laughs> stating that it, you do that as a sign of respect in the Vargos. So sometimes you might need to jump in and interject straight away and then they'll follow your lead. Don't feel like you can't do that. Don't let them hang themselves out to dry if you can save it. Okay. So... So it is... It is okay to... Answer on their behalf? Or... Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's your job. Yeah, it's your domain. That's your client. I... I I wasn't exactly sure. I was kind of following like Uriel's lead, you know, um, and I wasn't sure. There, there were times where I kind of wanted to jump in during the questioning, but I wasn't sure if like that was appropriate to do. But... It's, it's an underhanded shit to do, but you need to do that to save your, your client sometimes because they, they will set themselves on fire. They do dumb yeah, things. He, he, he definitely did. So now we have to we have to work with his... His shitty story. story yeah his his shitty story about how he walked to the clothing store to meet rue for coffee um uh probably during the the appeal they better have yeah. their story straight another thing you can do if you think you're getting into dangerous territories just uh tell the pd you need to um uh, you need a few minutes with your client give me one sec hey i'm just in a meeting i'll give you a call back okay sounds good bye okay. So yeah, just tell them you, you need a couple of minutes um, with your client and um, uh, just stop everything there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. Because sometimes you'll get into hella dangerous territory where they're about to open up something dumb and get themselves raided. You jump in, you stop that. Say, so give me a couple of minutes with my client. I, I've literally been in interrogation rooms where I've yelled at them to, to shut the fuck up and stop talking. We're not answering any questions now. Because I know exactly what uh, dumb grounds they're about to get themselves into. People do love to yap. They love to talk. Yep. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I've been telling people, like, people that have been bringing up, like, the sort of uh, issues that they've been having with PD... And they're like, yeah, I tried to talk to the officers about it. And, and I'm like, stop. Stop it. Don't talk to them. Yeah. Um, like, unless it is, like, it's it's obviously one of those kind of like, if it's not a big deal, if, if you just want to talk to them, if you don't really care, do, do whatever you want. But if it's a big deal, if something happened, do not talk to cops about it. Don't give them the aim. Like, don't don't give them. Yeah, don't uh, don't be like me way. and tell them that I'm gonna murder this exact person and cut their fingers off, and then the body shows up with their fingers missing. Don't do what I did. Yeah, just just don't give them the ability to get their story straight. Yeah. Like, and that's what people keep doing is they keep telling them their grievances, and then all of a sudden, the cops story changes i don't think pick, kid picked up what reggie have, said you know basically everything is on their side and they can kind of twist it to talk more than benji true them, and that person is now kind of screwed maybe over. mickey i'm like just don't t don't say anything just go to a lawyer get it on the docket or go to you know civil court and figure it out there don't give them ammunition you know yep Exactly. That's what happened with like a friend of mine is that like an officer apparently flat out denied a lawyer. I think I told you about it. She, did. she denied a lawyer for yeah. her. Um, and now the officer is stating that she did request a lawyer. Uh, <laughs> Reggie just straight really up said I murdered someone. <laughs> Kid didn't make up on it. it <laughs> to me. But you know, it's, it's just, I don't know. D don't talk to cops. Yep. You know, there was a cop today. I was doing repairs, and there was a cop that, like, I used to work with, and he was like, "So, so, how's, how's the civilian life? Like, what, what you been up to?" And I was just like, "Oh, you know, it's repairs, farming." And he's like, "Are you criminal now?" And I was just like, kind of taken aback by the question. Um, That's because there's only cops and criminals in the city to a lot of people. And 
I just kind of, like, I just, I didn't really say anything. And he kind of just kept talking. And he's like, oh, you're a legal aid. Sorry, my bad. And he's like, no, I feel bad. And then he kind of just, he kept, like, talking to me. And oh, I she's still doing stopped um, talking completely veggies. to him. And then he got, he felt like he kind of got a little offended about the fact that I didn't want to talk to him anymore. But I'm sort of like, hmm, you're going to flat out ask me if I'm a criminal. I'm not saying anything. Yeah. It's how PD will, a lot of PD will always paint people, right? Um, even when I was a judge, I was labeled as corrupt, the criminal and that kind of stuff. When uh, I would specifically, even though I was in Seaside, I would specifically stay completely neutral. And uh, I would fuck over criminals just as much as I'd fuck over PD. Uh, and whilst, yes, I was still high ranking inside of a gang, uh, I would touch nothing to do with them. And I stipulated that when I took the job, because I will touch nothing to do with these people. Anything close to them, I will stay away from and not even look at. Yet I still got called corrupt the whole time and that I'm a criminal. Mm -hmm. I was one of the fairest judges out there. But just how some people see it and can't change their mind. Yeah. Kind of, you know it's too bad that it's like if you're you know that's the mentality that if you're if you're not a cop you must be committing crimes and granted yeah I, I am thank you committing crimes, but I, thank you, you whoever know, did that i, I kind of wanted like i i had to keep my mouth shut but i kind of wanted to be like you're a cop i appreciate you investigate it yeah yeah well now you get to see it from the other side yeah yeah there, there are no civilians to some cops probably doing the right job exactly yeah i don't know i am um, but like all this lawyer stuff happening like I'm, you know, I'm excited about thank it. you for the 10 I bomb do it and everything thank so you so much i think um appreciate it you know i like i like roof running and stuff like that but i think it's just not worth the risk you know um you know like the club and everything i'm looking forward to Ah, we'll um, do some fun white collar crimes. I think that's going to yeah. be more your style and yeah, like what I do, right? Is whilst yes, I can do those things. It's just I prefer the uh, working in the shadow kind of stuff. And uh, on the surface, they can't pin you for shit. They can sit there and think that you do illegal shit all you want, all they want. Like yesterday, I, I gave someone my car so they could help Fiona try and get out of a chase, and I was just sitting there the whole time, like, well. Well, what can you do? Can't prove shit that I was involved with anything. Uh, that's yeah. the kind of shit I enjoy because I, I, it frustrates people that they can't nail me. And it's the same as what it used to be uh, back uh, before we all had to escape the city. Was uh, I just can't get pinned for a lot of shit. And uh, that's what makes me happy. Not going to jail and robbing banks and all that kind of shit yeah yeah i think that's that's the better way to go for me i think it's it's you know like i said roof running's fun but i think this is more interesting yeah and then you can still do your, your lawyer stuff yeah exactly yep yep it's basically the same stuff that i used to do and um uh benji knew that there was limitations on things i would do there, there were certain times where i was forced to still like shoot cops when i had to and i still got away but they also made it a priority that i always got away from that stuff so don't feel That's like good. that in doing those things that um people will just automatically exclude you and not care about what you're gonna be like having to worry about or force you into doing things yeah oh i got a question for you mm -hmm. um do you know breckers yeah i i didn't really i had a really odd conversation with breckers yesterday and like i like i know that you know 
Benji and Ray have like done this group and it's called like Hades or whatever. But, you know, I don't really know, like know anything other than that. But Brecker's called me last night and he was like, so the new group, Hades, you know, and he was like, I, I couldn't tell if I wasn't sure if I was supposed to say anything. And he's like, Benji told me about it. And I was like, oh, OK. And then he kind of was like pressing me and he was like, so you're going to join? You're going to join? I was like, I, I don't know. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Murphy Braun just texted me. Please call me ASAP. Give me one second. I lost this pool champ. Hi, Murphy. How are you? I lost this pool uh, champ. I, I can be. Uh, I'm up in the hills. But I, I can come meet you if you need me to. I yeah, I could I could come meet you in Plato. That's Plato. You going to get murdered? Uh. Oh, hold on. Bum, 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 bum. Good song. Rat fuck brackers! I have to go meet Murphy. Can I call you when I'm done with this? Yeah, you're good. I gotta have okay, to catch up with Flippy you. anyway. Okay. Well, right. bye. That's what Flippy wants. It's good, what Flippy. Up, How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Just finished my mating. Okay. Um, in like, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, you want to meet up? Everyone's awake yep. right now. Uh, Miguel and Ash are awake too, so. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, do you want to just come to the cold stock? Uh, yeah, we can just talk to the cold stock. Uh, in uh, 20 minutes, you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, easy. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Yeah. Finally! Finally! Meeting with Hydra, we're joining them! They're blooding us in! What? If you guys have some free time while you're watching, uh, please, please, uh, scan the QR code on your mobile. Uh, get to level 5, you'll help me immensely, it's free to do. Lots of RP. Welcome to Reggie's life. Always yapping. I need to get my food. I need to get my food because I'm hungry as fuck. All right, so 20 minutes is going to be 10 past two. Okay. All right, we need to go down to the club and see exactly what furniture we need now. What game is it? Uh, Ants Legion. It's at the top right of the screen. You'll see that little thing. You got to scan the code. You can't just download it itself. Because it goes to a link and registers that you did it through me. We are on uh, world 355. The alliance name is SMG. Yes, yeah, so we're keeping slime money gang alive in a different game. Trident interactions. We need to talk to Benji, that rat fuck. Especially now that Reggie's had to deal with what Benji had to deal with. Beam. All right, we'll go down the club, see what furniture we need. I'll run and quickly plate up my food so I can eat it. For someone on your team who uh, paid a win. I, listen, I, I said it yesterday. Um, I have a strong thing where I always end up buying things on those games. 
way to play it on pc no so it's only um only mobile downloads not pc or emulators unfortunately however i do believe that if you do end up wanting to play it on pc you do it on mobile first once you reach level five then you, you should be able to use an emulator and log in from that emulator but the initial stuff needs to be done through um thing through phone there's a lot of games that i've played and spent way too much money on them i'm not gonna lie makes you feel old as shit good okay Give me, give me a couple of minutes, guys. I'm just going to run and quickly grab some food. And we can get ready for the meeting with Hydra. Be right back. Okay, that's it's heating up. I'll go grab it in a couple of minutes. While we wait, I need to put some more things on to start yeah, upgrading on my little ant farm. Seven people to help? Done. And all my little ants that are ready. Okay. We've got 14 minutes left on the queen. Upgrade that. Build more units. Do some research. Oh, 
That's on. Give me talent points. I heard my food beep, bear it back. Okay, I may or may not have, um, <sighs> may or may not have put more on my plate <laughs> than what I should have. I just looked at that and I was like, okay, that's, I'm not even going to eat all that. Yep. Yep. That happened. Alright. I'm just gonna eat before this meeting.